In this lesson, we'll get back to the chair scene and light it using a combination of a Vira rectangle light and a Vira dome light. Now let's start by splitting our viewport into two. I'll set the left viewport to look through our camera. The right viewport will be our standard 3D view for moving objects around. Now from the Vira menu, start an interactive render or just change the viewport shading to rendered. We have no lights in the scene, therefore we get a black render. Hey folks, welcome to MoGraph Plus. This video is a free sample from our course, The Ultimate Introduction to V-Ray for Blender. It's a massive 13 hour course where we dive deep into every aspect of V-Ray for Blender, everything you need to know step by step. If you'd like to master V-Ray inside Blender, make sure to check out the full course. You'll find the link right down in the description. And of course, don't forget to subscribe and hit the bell icon so you'll get notified whenever we post new tutorials and lessons. Now let's work on the key light. First, let's add a rectangular area light. Press Shift A and from the Add menu, go to Light and select V-Ray Rectangle Light. Now we can place the light while still seeing the result from our main camera on the left. Let's move the light up a bit and place it on the left side of the chair. The exact position of the light is negative 168 on X, negative 38 on Y, and 152 centimeters on Z. Next, I'd like the shadows to be a bit softer. To achieve that, we can simply raise the size of the light. Let's change the width and height to 1.5 meter by 1.5 meter. Later on, if we found out that the shadows are too soft, we can lower the size back to 1 meters. Now let's go to the light's data properties. I'll change the units to watts and set the intensity to 300. You'll notice how the way we place the light to the very side of the chair allows us to see this nice shadow fall off on the chair, which helps define the shape of our subject for the viewer. This is a fairly dramatic lighting setup and we can leave it as is, but let's make it softer and treat it more like a product photography shot. To do that, I'd like to add an overall fill light to make the shadows a bit brighter and lower the contrast of the composition. For that, we'll use a dome light. So let's add a very dome light to the scene. With the dome light selected, let's open the V-Ray node editor in the right view. Make sure the node tree is set to shader and click use V-Ray light nodes. I'll add a V-Ray bitmap node and load an HDRI image. Let's use the one called bathroom.exr from the assets HDRI folder. Because this is an HDRI map, we need to set the color space to sRGB and function to linear. Now connect its output to the color input of the light dome node. Let's just lower the intensity of the light dome to 0.5 as it is a bit too much currently. Now the scene is a bit too overexposed and we need to either adjust the exposure of our camera or lower the intensity of our lights. Let's take the second approach. Let's select the camera in the scene, come down to Vira physical camera section and enable it. Then come down to color and exposure, change the exposure mode to exposure value. In a Vira physical camera, the exposure value or EV is a single number that acts as a master control for the overall brightness of your render. It automatically balances the relationship between aperture, shutter speed, and ISO. Lower EV number equals brighter image for dark scenes like interiors or night shots. Higher EV number equals darker image for uh, bright scenes like sunny exteriors. Think of it as a simple brightness slider that uses real world camera physics to get the job done. In this case, 10 should be enough. Now you'll notice how this HDRI adds a lot of realism to the lighting. Uh, it adds a lot of natural colors, adds a bit of warmth. To see the HDRI, we can temporarily hide the walls object. Now we can rotate the HDRI to see it in the background. Cool, let me unhide the walls. 
Now we can rotate the dome light in the object properties until we get something nice and neutral. I would say at around the Z rotation of 27 degrees, we have a good angle that fills a lot of those dark shadows. Let me just hide and unhide the dome light in the outliner so you can see the difference it makes. It's subtle but it adds that crucial layer of realism. Now we are ready for the final render. Let's open up the render properties and come down to the sampler tab. In V-Ray, the noise threshold or noise limit is the single most important setting for controlling the final image quality and render time. In simple terms, it tells the renderer stop working on a pixel once it's clean enough. Here is the breakdown. When you use lower values like 0.005 or lower, you are demanding a very clean image with very little noise. This forces V-Ray to take many more samples, resulting in a higher quality image but a much longer render time. When using higher values like 0.02 or higher, higher, you are telling V-Ray you can tolerate more noise. It will stop sampling much sooner resulting in a faster render but a noisier lower quality image. The core trade-off is quality versus speed. It's the primary knob you turn to balance how clean you want your image versus how long you are willing to wait. 0.01 is a good balanced value. Let's set the noise threshold to 0.01. This will give us a nice high quality result. Next, in the View Layers tab, enable the Denoiser if it's not enabled already. Then in the V-Ray Node Editor, go to the World Tree, choose the Denoiser node, set Intel Open Image Denoise as the Denoiser type. It does a pretty good job and is fairly fast. Then let's go to the Output tab and set the resolution percentage to 100%. So we are rendering with the full resolution of 1333 by 2000 pixels. Now we are ready to take our final render. We can start a final render right from VFB or from V-Ray menu. So let's do that. Now it took around 2 minutes for this render. Before saving it out, we can do some basic color correction right in the V-Ray VFB. So let's open up the layers panel on the right side. I'll add a curve correction layer. Now we can use the curve to add a bit of contrast to the render. Now we can save the render out from the file menu to PNG or EXR using the save current channel command. Great, in this lesson we learned how to use a V-Ray rectangle light and a V-Ray dome light together to light and render a scene. See you in the next one.